In this video, I'm going to tell you about my experience with rolfing and share some thoughts and opinions on the subject. So first off, what is rolfing? Rolfing is a type of bodywork. It was developed by Ida Rolf, hence the name. And uh, it's actually called structural integration, but the students of Ida Rolf kind of took her name and just called it rolfing. So that's what a lot of people refer to it as. Basically, it involves the manipulation of fascia. Fascia is the connective tissue in your body. It surrounds all your muscles and organs and it connects the entire body and it's something that is often very overlooked. So why do they work on fascia? Fascia can become stiff, it can it, it goes in kind of like layers in your body and th those layers can kind of stick together. A function of rolfing is to work on that stickiness to break it apart so that you can glide those layers of fascia more smoothly like they're supposed to be able to. Another thing that can happen to fascia is that it can be overstretched. So one thing that they do is kind of work the fascia back into place where it's supposed to be. It involves deep tissue massage and uh, also doing movements like the patient or client does movements while they work with the tissue and its purpose, the purpose of structural integration is to align the body properly in accordance with gravity. That's kind of like the words that they use in alignment with gravity. So basically it involves straightening the body, straightening the spine. It's great for people with scoliosis, people with bad posture, that kind of thing. People report growing one to two inches from doing it, from their improved posture and straightening of their spine. And uh, you can read about this. You can see before and after pictures online and uh, it's, it's true. I've personally grown about an inch from doing body work myself, so I know that that's possible. So why was I interested in rolfing and why did I try it? I have terrible posture. I've had terrible posture ever since I was a kid. I first uh, remember noticing it in the mirror when I was like 11 or 12 years old, that my posture was terrible. And ever since then, I've been kind of self-conscious about it and I wanted to fix it or solve it but nothing has really helped. I went to physiotherapy, they didn't really offer any help. So when I found out about rolfing, it seemed interesting, it kind of made sense, like uh, that they work with the fascia of the body, something that seems very overlooked in physiotherapy. In physiotherapy and other things, they seem to only talk about muscles, like this muscle is weak and uh, lengthened, and this muscle is tight and uh, needs to be stretched out, that kind of thing, but they never really talk about fascia. I found out about Rolfing when I looked at a TED talk about fascia, and it was Tom Myers, he's this quirky, charismatic, interesting dude who uh, was a student of Ida Rolf, and he's very knowledgeable about it, he's a great body worker, and uh, he got me interested in it, and after seeing that talk, I looked at more videos and researched it a bit more. There are only about 2,000 rolfers in the world, so I was pretty lucky to find out that there was one in my city. So what is rolfing like? Rolfing is done in sessions of about one hour, and you do 10 sessions in total for a full body treatment. I think it's called the rolfing series, that's what they call it. Uh, 10 sessions where they go through different parts of your body, First off, you go in there and you get undressed uh, to basically your underwear or shorts or whatever while the practitioner leaves the room and comes back. And then what they do is they do a body check. Basically, they just look at your body from different angles to see what they're working with. And they also have you walk back and forth to do a little gait analysis to see how you're moving your body as you walk. And then they have you lay down on like a massage table and they start working on your body. Uh, it involves just applying pressure. It's like deep tissue massage and they do it in specific areas and specific motions and uh, specific uh, pressure and like uh, speed. Speed is also a factor, but it's not just massage. It's not completely passive. You're also involved in the process at times because you'll be asked to contract a certain muscle as they go through the movement uh, or release a, a muscle. And this is why rolfing seems powerful. Working of the tissue and doing movements at the same time has a synergistic effect that uh, provides very good results in terms of releasing fascia and breaking up adhesions and whatnot. Rolfing has a reputation of being painful and I wouldn't really say that's true. There are definitely moments where it's very painful I remember especially my uh, my pecs, 
uh, my my breasts, my chest area, and my biceps were very painful. Um, those were the most painful that I experienced. But everything else wasn't really painful. Uh, sometimes it was even just relaxing, almost like a massage. But uh, usually there's a little bit of pain, but it's nothing bad. And in fact, I kind of enjoyed the pain when it happened because it felt like it was working, like it was actually doing something. So they do one side at a time. The first half of the session, they do one side. They have you stand up, walk around a little bit, ask you how you're feeling. Do you notice any differences from before the session? Do you notice a difference in your sides? That kind of thing. So you can kind of notice yourself any changes. And at the end of every session, they do this weird thing where they put their hand uh, below the bottom of your spine, right above your butt, basically. And they just kind of put it there. It's very strange. I don't know what the purpose is. I try to look it up, like what is this supposed to do? And I do not understand what it does. It seemed kind of weird, it was slightly awkward, uh, but that's apparently something Rolfers do. You can ask them not to do it. But yeah, that's something that is worth knowing. <laughs> So I only did three sessions in total of rolfing, and there were several reasons for this. First off, it was kind of smelly in the guy's room. This is just an issue of my practitioner in particular, but basically the first time it didn't smell so bad, the second time it smelled a bit, and the third time it smelled terrible. I don't know why exactly, maybe he had a client right before me, maybe he was just sitting in the room while it was heating up. This was during winter, so he would heat up the room to have it nice and warm. For me, who's who was basically naked, and I believe that he just chilled in the room while it was heating up, just filling it up with his uh, exhalations. And the third time I was there, the last time, it just smelled awful. It kind of stuck to my body after the session. It was, I just really didn't like it. Secondly, uh, at the beginning of every session, he didn't look at my gait during the body check thing. This is something that rolfers are supposed to do. They're supposed to look at your gait while you walk back and forth so they can look at what they're working with. He never did this and I felt like this was very fishy, like perhaps he wasn't super qualified or the best rolfer, so that kind of turned me off. There were a few more things that made it seem like he wasn't the most skilled or experienced rolfer also. During the first treatment, he said that my body was very well aligned, and I don't really think that's true. He said I put most of my weight on my right foot, but in reality I put most on my left, which I've determined by standing on two scales, repeating it several times with the same results. He didn't give me any homework. Uh, that would be like exercises or stretches that would benefit me between the sessions and this is something that rolfers are supposed to do and uh, he didn't have anything like that for me. It also felt like he wasn't personalizing the sessions for me and my body either, that he was kind of just going through the motions and following the recipe, so to say. I also found the sessions to be slightly awkward. They got progressively more awkward, especially in the third one because he started working closer to my pelvis region and we didn't talk so much. I'm not a big talker and he didn't t say so much either. And it just kind of started to get a little bit awkward. You know, having someone touch your body, massage you basically, and uh, nobody's talking, it can just get a little bit weird. And yeah, that didn't really motivate me to come back for another session. And the biggest reason for why I didn't continue going to the raw thing was that I didn't see any noticeable improvements. I didn't feel anything different. And I also didn't see any visual differences. I actually took pictures of myself before the very first session and after every single session. So I had pictures to look at to see any change. And I took it with the camera in the exact same spot and standing in the exact same spot. So I could very easily see or discern any differences and I didn't see any at all. In fact, my posture actually became worse over the course of those sessions, but I don't attribute that to the rolfing. I attribute that to the fact that I was working a lot during that period. I was hunched over the computer and I wasn't really paying attention to my posture. In addition to that, the sessions were expensive. They were about $100 each and I didn't feel like investing money when I didn't see any improvement. Some last thoughts that I wanted to uh, add to this video was that when I looked up rolfing right before making this video, it is listed as being pseudoscience, and I find that to be extremely odd. I don't know why it would be considered pseudoscience. It's basically like saying that massage and stretching is pseudoscience, and uh, I think that's bizarre. You can look at the before and after pictures of people who have done rolfing, and you can notice the change. It is very easy to see what kind of effects it can have for certain people. 
If you're interested in trying rolfing, I, I do recommend it if you can afford it, if you find a good rolfer, and um, if you're not prone to fe things feeling awkward if you're not talking, or if you're able to talk a lot during the session to make it less awkward, then I recommend it. I also recommend checking out Thomas Myers or Tom Myers and his school of integration or structural integration, which is called Anatomy Trains Structural Integration. And I believe maybe his method is better. They do 12 sessions instead of 10. And he, he just seems more up to date. He kind of, he was a student of Ida Rolf, the originator of Rolfing. And he kind of took that knowledge and built on it and went in his own direction and created his own school, which just seems better, more up to date. And um, yeah, I recommend checking that out. So the bottom line and conclusion of this video is that Rolfing is not a magic pill. It won't automatically fix all your problems. It won't automatically fix your posture. You still have to look at your day-to-day -day habits, how you're holding your body, and address those things to see improvements in your posture. But I do recommend it if you can find a good Rolfer and that you can afford it, and if you don't think it would be too awkward for you to do it. All right, that is everything I had to say on this subject. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found this information useful. If you wanna see more videos with me, you can subscribe. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Bye-bye.